Oh, let the great old ones rise. Game Masters here, and today we are taking our first look into Kamigami Battles Rise of the Old Ones from Japanime Games. Jumping straight into it, the game itself is designed for two to six players, ages 14 and up, and takes about an hour and a half to play, give or take a few minutes. Inside the box is the manual itself, uh, the rules, 22 divider cards, and these are going to help you separate the cards out. Uh, 68 energy tokens, these are little round chits that you'll use to keep track of how much energy you have during the course of the game. 12 god cards, 6 location cards, and there are 221 more cards comprised of disciples, uh, warriors, uh, servitors, cultists, and high priests. There are 20 artifact cards and 21 randomizer cards. You'll notice that the artwork is heavily influenced by the anime, a uh, manga style. It's also kind of funny to see some of the great old outer gods uh, stylized in such a way, but I digress. The winning condition of the game is to be the last god standing. Uh, in other words, destroy your opponents or, or amass 25 energy points. The gameplay itself is rather simple, as it's a de deck building game. Not quite like Magic the Gathering, as in that game you buy booster pack after booster pack after booster pack and create a deck that way, but rather in Rise of the Old Ones, everything you need is right here in the box. Before we jump into showing off the cards and what they do, I'd love to ask that if you're enjoying this video, to please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow, and I thank you kindly for that. To begin play, you'll pick two god cards at random. The name of the card is here at the top, and you'll see three symbols here under their mugshot. These are called spheres of influence. Remember those. We'll come back to them in just a moment. The wording here are the abilities of the god. You can use these during your turn in which you can either make an action or a reaction to something that has happened. In the lower left corner is the mythology that the god is aligned with and really only comes into play uh, during team matches where multiple players combine their efforts to take out other teams of players. Using location cards are optional, but I want to cover them as well. The top of the card itself lists the location name. And remember those symbols on the god cards, the spheres of influence? The location cards have those as well. Only gods with matching symbols will dwell at that chosen location. Like the God cards, locations also have the action and reaction abilities. Next, we have Disciples. This is the stack of 90 of the 221 cards that we spoke about earlier. They too have their name listed at the top of the card, and in kind of a golden diamond there is a number. This number represents the cost in faith points to purchase or, or hire that Disciple. Like the other cards, they too can also act or react. There are three types of Disciple cards designated as 1, 2, or 3. Uh, with them varying in faith point costs. Then you have warrior cards. Again, their name is at the top of the card. They too have a, have a faith point cost and can act or react. But you'll also note that in the upper left corner are some more symbols inside circles. The larger circle is considered to be the primary color, and the smaller ones are considered to be chain colors. Okay, it breaks down like this. You can play as many warrior or artifact cards, and we'll cover the artifacts in a moment, but only as long as the chain color matches is a primary color of the card that you previously played. Lastly, we have artifact cards, and you'll note right away the primary color and the chain colors, as well as the act and react, but you'll note something else too. There is a term listed called persistent. Not all artifacts have this, but what persistent means is that that specific artifact is not discarded when you reach your discard phase. Okay, phases. Your turn is broken down into five phases. The starting phase, the play phase, the recruit phase, the discard phase, and the end phase. During the start phase, sometimes nothing will really happen, and it quickly transitions to the play phase. However, during the start phase, you or an opponent may have the option to use a react ability of a god, warrior, or artifact. During the play phase, you may play a warrior, artifact, and or disciple card from your hand. During the recruit phase, you will spend your faith points to add cards to your draw deck. Any faith points left over are lost at the end of this phase, so spend wisely. The discard phase is next. Here you will gather up all of the cards from both your hand and what you played this turn and place them into your discard pile face up. You may not hold cards from turn to turn. If any other players played react cards during your turn, they must put those cards into their discard piles at this time. You may discard cards in any order. One of the phases that is not in this game is the one where I thank my sanity supporters. They have become members and directly support this channel, and if you'd like to do that as well, I'll leave a link down in the description, and of course you'll have my mighty thanks. The final phase is the end phase, in which you will draw five cards from your draw deck to refill your hand. Your turn is now over, and the next player then takes their turn. 
As mentioned, the objective is to either destroy all of the other gods out there or gain 25 energy points for yourself. Now, there are also multiple ways to actually play Kamigami battles. There is the free-for-all, in which it's everyone against everyone. You can play with locations or without. You can play a team match game, in which you must have exactly four to six players. In this version, getting to 25 energy doesn't win you the game. Instead, you must knock out all the other gods or reduce them down to zero energy. You can also add expansions or even combine them. At the time of making this video, there are only two expansions out for Rise of the Old Ones. The stars are right, and into the dreamlands. Basically, there were so many gods, uh, so many old gods, that they just couldn't include them all in the base game. There is also an all-out war variant in which you play with a smaller sized deck for a slightly faster gameplay experience. While we've gone fairly deep into the rules and how to play, uh, the rules in the manual do go a fair bit deeper, but what all I've just described should be enough to get you started. The mechanics are not overly complex, and the randomness of the card drawing is perfect so that the game never really plays the same twice. Overall, the neat aspect to this specific game of Kamigami Battles is that it's all Cthulhu themed. They, uh, Japanime Games, also has several other versions of Kamigami Battles, um, Battles of the Nine Realms, River of Souls, as well as loads of expansions for each. And I gotta be honest, never would I have thought we'd see an anime uh, manga stylized depiction of Ithaqua or, or even uh, Yog sothoth or other HP Lovecraft type creatures and characters. I gotta admit, this is certainly an interesting new take on the eldritch horror uh, cosmic horror genre. I've been on a Cthulhu kick as of late, and if you'd like to see a little more about Cthulhu himself, be sure to check out this playlist. I've got a couple more Cthulhu-based videos in the works, and I'll be adding uh, to that, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you don't miss them when they come out. Tell me what you think of this new Kamigami Battles down in the description, and until next our paths cross, may all the stars be right for you.